Even with its age, Skyrim still pulls plenty of players to its expansive world with its many factions. But with so many options at their fingertips, which faction should the Dragonborn join? I'm Will from GameRant, and today we're ranking every joinable faction in Skyrim. Number 11. The Bard's College the Bard's College feels like a huge waste of potential. Players joining the college might expect many wild quests performing throughout the land, but instead are greeted with a half-hearted fetch quest. After the fetch quest, there is a brief festival event and then that's it. The one upside is the player now has access to a master level speech trainer. You don't get any special skills or perform in any taverns, meaning that the Bard's College really is just a waste of time. Number 10. The Blades. The Blades have noble goals, but unfortunately are a bit short-sighted and militant. Delphine helps the player throughout the first couple of main quests, but afterwards starts to grate on the Dragonborn to kill Parthenax. She refuses to do anything until then, and even afterwards she doesn't do that much. Plus, Parthenax is easily worth more alive than dead, so following the Blades questline is a detriment to the world. Besides some gear that the Dragonborn can get if they join, the Blades isn't worth taking the time for. Number 9 the Greybeards. On the opposite end of the Blades, the Greybeards follow the guidance of Parthenax and refuse to act to save the world. They do offer the Dragonborn an upgrade to some of their shouts, although not all of them, but have nothing else to reward you for your dedication. Plus, unless you kill Parthenax, you're functionally a part of the faction by just doing their main quest. The Greybeards aren't exactly the most enticing option in Skyrim. Number 8. The Stormcloaks. There are a few reasons why the Stormcloaks aren't the best faction in Skyrim, the biggest one being their violent tendencies towards non-Nords. From a questing perspective, their missions are a bit dull since they boil down to go to a place, clear out the enemies, repeat. Apart from experience, it doesn't offer anything new or exciting to the player and just feels lacking. The Stormcloaks don't even offer faction-specific training or gear, and people don't really treat you any differently, so it just doesn't feel worth it. Number 7. The Imperial Legion It looks like the Civil War story doesn't have a good side, as the Imperial Legion wants to stamp out religious freedom and Nordic tradition throughout Skyrim. If the player joins the Legion, they are subjected to the same kinds of quests as they would from the Stormcloaks. Also like the Stormcloaks, the player is not treated any differently, nor do they earn any special rewards from joining the Legion. The Civil War storyline isn't anything special, and both sides seem to be a losing gambit. Number 6. The Companions if the player is looking for a great way to level up combat abilities as a lower level character, the Companions is a much better way to go about it. They have a much more engaging story than the Civil War, although the higher level raiding quests can become a bit of a grind. Joining the Companions also gives the player a beast form, which many consider to be worth it alone. Plus, it offers 7 Companions, all of which are viable warriors in their own right, and 6 really good trainers. Number 5. The Volkahar Clan With the Dawnguard DLC, players can choose a side between mortals and vampires. The Volkahar Clan of vampires, led by the tyrant Harkon, is a bit one note. Everyone in the clan is generally bloodthirsty with a disdain for mortals and are tired of Harkon's politics. The clan feels a bit off-putting, but joining can lead to becoming a vampire lord, which gives you a bunch of new abilities and a whole new style of gameplay. The Dragonborn can also summon Deathhounds as followers, but can't bring any clan members along with them. Number 4 the College of Winterhold The Dragonborn is brought to the college in their pursuit of an Elder Scroll, but players can often get caught up in the story. Mage classes get the most out of the college, as there are master and expert level trainers for every school of magic. Plus, it holds plenty of useful tools for any adventuring mage. Not to mention the story of the college is incredibly intriguing and can entrap many a player in its plot. Number 3 the Dawn Guard. The Dawn Guard has plenty of boons to come with its story of protecting Skyrim from vampires. The story of the Dawn Guard has plenty of intrigue and lore to keep the Skyrim historians busy. The members of the Dawn Guard have colorful and fun personalities, plus there are plenty of followers and trainers that the Dragonborn can take full advantage of. While siding with vampires sounds really cool, the Dawn Guard definitely has some good things going for it. Number 2. The Thieves Guild The Thieves Guild has some of the best things going for it. The story the story is multi-layered with plenty of twists and turns. Stealth builds will feel right at home as their strength and cunning are tested to rise through the ranks. And the impact of the storyline actually feels tangible as the quests around Skyrim grow the influence of the guild. Plus the trainers available to members of the guild are perfect for the ultimate stealth archer build. Number 1. 
The Dark Brotherhood The Dark Brotherhood is definitely a favorite faction of many Skyrim fans, and looking at it reveals why. The members of the guild are interesting in their own way and feel a lot more varied. Missions require different approaches, meaning that the player has to think on their feet a lot more. Plus, it has some of the greatest impact on the world of Skyrim when compared to other factions. The Dark Brotherhood is a must for all looking to experience Skyrim. That was our ranking of every faction in Skyrim. For more games and articles like this, remember to drop by GameRant.com. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you next time.